Hey guys, in this lesson, I show you how to sequence your animations in Anime Studio. The sequencer in Anime Studio is yet another way to look at the timeline of our project. With the channels timeline, we're able to look at different keyframes, as you can see here, and manipulate those keyframes for a certain layer. With the sequencer, we are able to see all the layers at once. And with that, we can move the layers around and dictate when we want our animations to start on the timeline in a more broader sense. We can also control when the graphics will appear on the timeline using some visible options that we can turn on and off. And finally, it's useful for controlling audio, for placing your audio down, especially if you're trying to sync out a mouth or if you want a piece of audio to appear right at a certain time. So what I would like you to do is open up a project file if you have one available to you, or if you want to, you can create some graphics for this project. You could just make a new project and just create some simple graphics. It doesn't really matter what they are, circles, squares, or better yet, if you have an audio file to import too, you can do that as well to follow along with this tutorial. So once you have laid out your project, as I have specified, I want you to click on the sequencer tab located on your timeline. Here, you'll be presented with a new looking timeline. And as I said, you have access to all of your layers that are currently on your timeline. And you'll notice, for instance, with my Benex side bone layer, if I click the arrow on the layers window, you'll see that all those layers underneath also appear in the sequencer. So not only can we control um, main layers, but we can control the layers underneath those layers as well, which can be helpful if you want to get more detailed with your sequencing in your layers. So, what is this used for exactly? Well, first let me just mute my audio here so we don't hear that while I'm playing with this. As you can see, as I page through this animation, we have my character start talking and he starts moving and so on. And that all starts at frame one. Well, let's say for instance, I create this animation of this character and I don't want him to start on frame one. I realize later on, for whatever reason, I want him to start on frame 48 or three seconds in or four seconds in, whatever the case may be. Well, with the sequencer, what I can do here is click on his layer and drag it to where I want it to start. So let's say three seconds in. So coming back here to frame zero, when I page through this, you'll see that he doesn't animate at all during those three seconds. When we hit the green arrow here, which is indicating that's where the animation starts now, you'll see now that he starts to talk and do his little animation. That is one case where the sequencer can be beneficial. It's for sequencing out your animations. Now, secondly, um, I will now check the audio here so I can make it reappear in my sequencer. This is good for audio. As you can see here, I have my audio file, and the audio file starts on frame 12. Because I pushed the character animation up now three seconds, as I did on the sequencer here, his animation doesn't start until that point, the audio for the mouth isn't going to sync up because I moved that sequence forward. Well, with the sequencer, we can also push our audio forward or backward. So what I can do here now is, well, just to demonstrate first, so as you can see, the voice is going before he talks. Well, what I can do now is I can just click and drag this up to where the animation now starts, which is right there. So now, when I page through this, you can see now that the voice is synced to the mouth. And so again, this is useful for audio if you need to sync up your mouths or if you need an audio or a video to appear at a certain point on the timeline. Now the last thing I'll show you is how to make your objects appear 
and disappear with the sequencer. This is useful if you want a character, let's say for instance, to walk off the side of the screen and you're done with him. You could simply make him invisible. Or let's say you're doing some text. You want text to pop in and out of your cartoon. This would also have a use for that. And of course, there are other uses for this option, but those are just some examples to kind of get you started on thinking about what you could do with it. Now, I will point out that if you do this, you need to be within the sequence. For instance, I'm going to use the Benic side bone layer for this uh, demonstration, but if I did this before frame 72, since the sequence starts on frame 72, uh, you wouldn't see this take place. So what I will do here is page forward a bit to about frame 90. Let's say on frame 90, I want this layer to disappear from the screen. What I can do is with that layer selected, come over here to the layer settings button. Then, under Compositing Effects, choose Visible and deselect it, and click OK. What you'll notice now is the layer disappears, but if we page back one frame, you'll see that it's still there. So basically, what we have here is, and you can see it right in the sequence, we have the layer and it just drops off at a certain point right here. So what we can do is, let's say at about frame 108, we want to bring it back. Well, we simply go back to that option, click Visible, and click OK. And you'll see now that the character reappears. So we have that gap in the timeline. It doesn't delete the asset entirely, it just hides it. So again, this could be useful for text popping in and out, or if you want a character to not be visible for a certain amount of time, but you want him to reappear later on, this could be useful for that. Anyway, it's time to wrap up this lesson. The sequencer is great, especially if you are trying to manage a bunch of layers at once. They have a bunch of animations. And this is especially true if you decide that you need to move things, if you need to move your animations or if you need to pinpoint where you want your audio to be on the timeline. And finally, it's good for doing the visible and invisible effect for your drawings. So coupled with your channel's timeline, I think you'll find the sequencer to be a great asset. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.